Hello there everyone. For this video, it's going to be an introduction to our National Incident Based Reporting System, our NIBRS data, mostly because if you want to work with NIBRS data, the file size is quite large and it takes a larger computer in terms of processing speed, RAM, everything associated with that to download, open, make subsets of data. With that, the FBI has done a better job at least giving you descriptives and some of these smaller numbers available online that you can go through and look at to get a gist of what's going on. This is still a pretty common data set that's used as secondary data analysis for crim criminal justice researchers. So what you see here in front of you is the main NIBRS website. I honestly just went to Google, typed in NIBRS is the first one that comes up for the FBI, and they do keep it fairly updated. I'm going to show you a couple different parts to the NIBRS data. Primarily what people are used to seeing now is the Crime Data Explorer. And going through that, they continue to update and upload more information on NIBRS. It's pretty interesting to see it change over time. For those of you who are aware, NIBRS is in the process of taking over for UCR. The transition is supposed to be in 2021. Realistically, it's going to take longer than that, just based on the NIBRS processing and everything that comes with the certification side of the data. But with that, if we want to take a look at one of the more recent years that were up dated and uploaded was the 2019. And to get to this page, I ended up typing in NIBRS 2019 map because I wanted to go down. This kind of gives you an overview of the data itself, but I wanted to find our full report for NIBRS 2019. So I found that, which took me here. And I like this because it gives you an interactive site. And with that, it, Honestly, this is the main part I wanted to show. It gives you the numbers of information of how many agencies reported, what percent of population, the good inf information that you would need to know to know the representation of NIBRS for 2019. But this, knowing those numbers helps when you take a look at the interactive map. I mean, if you start to zoom in, you'll see some areas that just aren't covered at all, certain states. So if we go down to Florida, we're not seeing anything at all. Alabama has limited coverage, Mississippi, New Mexico, Nevada, California. So you start to see there's gaps in our reporting with NIBRS data as a whole. So you need to keep that in mind if you're wanting to do an analysis of agencies across the U.S. It's not possible. It's still sitting at, let's see, I think it gets at 51%, 51.3%. So we're about half of the agencies in the U.S. So we're missing quite a bit. But with that, if you wanted to do city-specific analysis, you do have the options to do that. And this is where Arkansas is a little different than some other states. We've been NIBRS compliant now for over a decade, which means all of our agencies are used to recording, reporting, and sending our NIBRS data to ACIC, the Arkansas Crime Information Center, when then it goes on to the FBI. But you can see here across Arkansas, there's different types of agencies. And if I wanted to zoom in, I do a lot in Little Rock, but I'm now working at U of A Fayetteville. So you can see as you zoom in, if you want to click on an agency and if you see the legend down in the bottom right corner this is the university itself so say i wanted to use nibers data and i wanted to use a subset of data and just focus on crimes that occurred on campus i would go through nibers and identify the ori the unique id for this agency and i would pull it up and use this and i could download it and use a subset of the all the nibers data similar if i wanted to do fayetteville itself I could do the same thing with Fable as the city versus the university. Keep in mind two different police agencies, so you're going to have different numbers and everything associated with that. And then if you want to go to a county level, we also have our Washington County. So we have three different types of data sets all related to crime occurring in around from University of Arkansas to Fayetteville to the larger county within Arkansas. And for me, this is where I luck out and I have worked with a number of agencies that report NIBRS data. So when we're asking for data polls or anything associated with local crime information, like say Little Rock, and we did an article on this with some colleagues, we could ask for data from their NIBRS dashboard. So we know the other variables that are rich in NIBRS that aren't say present in UCR that we could ask for. That could be victim offender relationship, injury type, firearm usage, what type of firearm. It could be victim or uh, suspect demographics location categorization, suspected use of alcohol, drugs, everything associated with that. So you can grab a lot of information that's just not present in UCR. That's the big divergence there. But the downside is we have left around just 50%, 51% of all agencies reporting NIBRS. 
that's a give and take with it from moving from UCR to Nibris and I zoom back out. You can still see a lot of agencies have the gaps. And this is where it's going to take a while for agencies and cities and jurisdictions to come around to it. It costs money if we're looking at the RMS system and data management systems. It's tough. And I even asked recently, about what, four or five months ago, my hometown of Springfield, Illinois, I requested their crime data. And if they had NIBRS and they haven't switched over yet, they were in the process. So there's many hurdles that agencies have to go through to get that certification and be able to report NIBRS data. And that comes with audits on their data afterwards. Sorry, I didn't mean to double click on that. But you can see even in the Northeast, we have a lot of gaps in here and some of our larger areas too that have honestly phenomenal data portals. So you can go to some of these websites, say for Philadelphia, uh, Newark and all of these, and they have great online data portals where you can download most of their crime data. But when it comes to federal reporting, it's a little different with that. But all right, so now if, you, if you're familiar with this, you can go back, it has it for 2018, 2017. The easiest part for me was to try to find the final report. I just found this overview of the data itself when it was first released. But with that, now I'm gonna come over to the Crime Data Explorer. And this is the main page. And if I click on it, any one of these states, it'll kind of give you an idea of what's going on. I didn't mean to do that, I wanted to hover it for a second. So right now it's on Mississippi. If I come over to Arkansas, it tells you how many agencies, if you see over here, are reporting. We can see now that the US is up to about 57% of the agencies. Keep in mind it's 2021. That data that were online were from 2019. So there is a significant lag, and if you've read Dr. Jacob Kaplan's book on NIBRS, the introduction kind of overview of NIBRS, that's one of the biggest hurdles is the lag time of when the public can see it. But we do have some states, Illinois still at zero, Missouri at 6%, even Florida as a whole is not certified. We do see California up at 57 now, but this is a cool way just to see how many have progress or how many have transitioned over and the progress being made within NIBRS data itself. For us, let's go ahead, since we want to look at NIBRS specific, there is law enforcement data, which is just as cool to look at. Let's click on Arkansas, given that's where I'm at now. And say I want to look at a specific agency, I'm going to type in Fayetteville Police Department. So this is where the University of Arkansas is within. And I want to look at 2019 data itself. So it even shows you kind of where it's at within the state. It allows you even to look at some of the data if you want to pull it out and view state data versus national. The key part that I want to get down to, and we'll continue to go down, is our victim offender demographics. This is where it starts to pull from our NIBRS data itself. Now, I will say these are cool visualizations, nice data tools, and they give you the option to download it here. And this is where I want you to know that if you download, you're specifically only getting this table. You're not getting the data, the incidents, the violent crimes that made up these, you are just getting these numbers. So if you wanted to recreate these, this table and actually arrange it based on the age values to see that age crime curve, you could do that. And you could do it for multiple years because keep in mind, this is for 2019. You can change it to percentage and see what that looks like. Again, you can at the top here, this was age. You can do it by sex, race, and ethnicity, if I remember, is not as well captured for this area but it is there. And this is where if you're not familiar with data, you don't want to download a large file from NIBRS and go through unzipping and trying to join them together if you're not using the extract. This is a good way to understand what's going on within the data set. To me, since I'm more location-based, I like that they have this as a category in terms of all the different ones and where a lot of the violent crimes are occurring. Not shockingly, a residential home is still the common one. And what's interesting to discuss, especially when we're going over different stats and data sets and topics in criminal justice crim, our victim offender relationships so we can look at what is known, unknown, or how that is within a specific area, city, jurisdiction. So to me, that's pretty cool to be able to just pull up the numbers and talk about it given your local area where your university's at or the city you're in, everything associated with that. Obviously, there's limitations based on NIBRS reporting and where you don't have it. But one of the big perks of using NIBRS data and the access to is the involvement of firearms in general. So it captures the weapon involvement. 
That's a key part where if we want to look at firearm research, which is starting to see the light of day when it comes to funding and understanding it better, this is a data set that's been capturing it for a while. And for some agencies, they've had this data for a long time, but no one really has asked for it, addressed it, looked at it from a temporal historical standpoint, but it does capture it here. Again, these data are for just 2019. You can change it to include multiple years, or do single years, and if you wanted to compare age over time, sex over time, race, crime types, everything with that, keep in mind, again, you're only downloading these tables, so it would be the age category and the percentage or number of those that you'd get. With that, this is a very introductory video to our NIBRS data, the General Crime Data Explorer. You can do different agencies, different years, everything that you want to look at with that. This is really just to show you what's possible with it. They do have other options here when it comes to crime types. Dr. Kaplan goes over this heavily. There's a lot of issues with the hate crime data that's already being reported and recorded by the FBI. I'm not gonna get into that here. Seek out his materials on that and he has a lot of good write-up on why it just is unreliable. But then we have homicide, property crime, arrest, so you can get into all of this information if you're interested in it. Fayetteville made the news uh, three or four years ago, and I say news, local news, on disproportionate minority arrests related to uh, marijuana offenses itself. The city labels it as the lowest offense, shouldn't be really enforced too heavily, it's still a crime here in the state of Arkansas, but it, they're not supposed to be arresting all the time associated with that. There were disparities when we looked at race, haven't looked at it other than just the counts itself, uh, but this is an easy way to start to look at how many offenses there are. But if you wanted to download the entire NIBRS data, you could pull this and then look at victim, offender, arrestee, race, their demographics, the offenses they were charged with, the other incidents involved within that specific crime. So it could have, remember, NIBRS doesn't have a hierarchy, so there could be multiple crimes attached to, say, a drug possession type of thing. There could be other things going on as well. But NIBRS allows you to look at that together in the totality of it. With that, again, quick demo of kind of the Crime Data Explorer, how you can pull and look at some of the NIBRS data for your local area, city, state, jurisdiction. If there's any questions, please let me know. If you're not familiar with NIBRS data, again, Dr. Kaplan has an overview on that. I would also recommend just looking over some videos and how-tos on how to download the data, open it if you're using an extract file. All of that's within ICPSR as well, so if you have questions with that, reach out. If not, take care.